Hi everybody and welcome back. I'd like to take a couple minutes here to kind of go outside of the book for a change and introduce you to some functionality that's built into Excel that you might find useful now that you're getting into some pretty complicated and nested formulas. So if we go here to the formula tab in Excel, see a few things out here that you may not have known about or haven't played with yet, but we're going to walk you through these to give you a maybe a step up in understanding how your complex formulas are working or why they're not working. So every time I write a big long formula that isn't giving me the result that I want, I'll come in here and, and uh, evaluate the formula that I'm looking at. So just for an example, let's start off with something simple. So we have a cell here that I'm adding three things together, three plus four plus five. So if I want to come over here and say, hey, evaluate that formula, I'm doing this just to give you an example, show you how Excel thinks and how it operates in the order that it operates in. So right now it says, okay, I'm going to add 3 plus 4, because you can tell that because it's underlined. So I'm going to evaluate that. So it evaluates that to 7. Now it's the next thing that's underlined is what it's going to evaluate next. 7 plus 5 is 12. And then I can just restart that. And it does the same thing over again. It's like, okay, that's fine. Got that figured out. I'm adding three things together. That works. But let's uh, give you another example. I've got an example here, something similar to your first uh, assignment. So I have an item that has a cost of 1000 And then I have a markup, which is 22%. Uh, so just kind of thinking about that. If I have a cost and I mark it up 22%, What's the amount of that? Uh, I don't know, $1,220, something like that maybe. And then I have to add a tax rate onto that of 7.5%. And then I need to come up here with a, for a formula that adds the, ta the taxes onto the cost of the widget. And I've got here a formula that says it's $91.50. Well, that doesn't make any sense. That's not right. So I've got a formula here that takes the price, takes the markup, adds one to it, and then multiplies that by the tax rate. Well, if I'm not, if I can't just see the error in that, I want to see what Excel is doing one step at a time. Hit escape, get back out to it. Now come here and check the formula. I want to evaluate the formula. All right, so here, the first part of the formula is A3. So I'm going to step in and say, okay, go grab the value for cell A3. All right, it's 1000 bucks. And then I step out. So I put that 1000 in here. So now 1000 times 1 plus A4. All right, well, what is A4? Step into it, go get the value. Okay, it's 22%. So now 1 plus 0.22, evaluate that. It's 1.22, so 1,000 times 1.22, evaluate that, is $1,220 times whatever is in A5, 7.5%. So now I step out. So now it's like, oh, it's taking that 1,220 and multiplying it by the tax rate. So if I hit evaluate, so what I'm doing instead of calculating the sell price of the widget, I'm just calculating the taxes itself on the widget. So I want to find out, I need to change that formula where I'm taking the A5 I need to add 100% to it. So now I think that's the right price. So I'm taking 1220, adding six or adding seven and a half percent to it, and coming up with the right answer of 13, 11, and 50 cents. And if I want to step through it again, I can say, okay, a thousand times one plus the markup. Evaluate that. Evaluate that. Step in, go grab my 7.5%. So 1220 
times 1.075, evaluate that, comes up with the right answer. All right, that's another example. I'll do one more example here. Let's say that I've got, I need to calculate a student's score and assign a letter grade of an A or a B or something other than an A or B. So if I have a, a minimum score for an A is 90% or 90 in this case, and a minimum score for a B is 80, and then I have the student score here at 95, and then I have a, a nested if statement that says, if 95 is greater than 90, 95 is greater than 90, you earned an A. Okay, that makes sense. Then if 95 is less than or equal to A11, which is 80, you earned a B. And if it's not either of those, then it's none of the above, right? All right, so let's test it out. Go to 95. Let's Let's test it out. 100, you earned an A. You got a 90, you earned an A. What's an 89? Should be a B. Oop, none of the above. So we got something wrong. 85, 80. Oh, 80 is right, but 80, anything between 80 and 90 is wrong. Okay, what's 75? 50 should come out to something other than a B. So we have a error here in the problem. Now one thing I want to show you while I'm here that's kind of cool, you can trace the precedence within a cell. So the way that I've been doing it all semester is clicking in the formula and it kind of shows you that these three cells are highlighted so these three cells are part of the formula. You can also just trace the precedence and now this it actually points to which cells are feeding this formula. And I can turn them off if I want. It's kind of kind of handy from time to time if you have a real complex formula and you want to see where you're getting your data from. But I want to evaluate this formula to figure out where the error is. So I'm going to evaluate formula. All right, so let's start off from the top. It's looking for A12. Should be 50. Well, let's close this. Our problem was if we were in the mid-80s. So let's put that... 85 back in there. Evaluate, oops, evaluate the formula. A12. So that's an 85. So let's step in and grab the 85 sheet. A12, 85. Step out. So is 85 greater than or equal to 90? Is 85 greater than or equal to 90, I would say false. Sure enough, that's false. So it's going to skip over this because that's what is returned if it's true. So it's going to bop down here to A12 and step in. It's like, okay, is 85 less than or equal to A11? I'm thinking this is a B, so I want it, this to be true. Is 85 less than or equal to 80? Evaluate it. It's false. Oh, crap. So if that's false, it's not going to go there. It's going to go to here and do none of the above. So I found my problem. It's in that statement, in that logic statement right there. So I'm going to come back here and say, oh, yeah. If A12 is supposed to be greater than A11, change that. Now I can test it out. Let's see here. So let's test it out again. So let's do like 95. That's an A. 90 is an A. 89 is a B. I don't know. 81. 80. Still a B. Okay, anything less than 80 should be none of the above. Even if I do 79.999999 Still, it's less than 80. So my logic works now. So this is a very simple and kind of cool way to evaluate your complex formulas.